Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our 11th family meeting. We've been doing these for a while. It's, I feel like it's become sort of a tradition. We can't ever go back to not having family meetings. Uh, thank you for joining us. For those of you who are who are able to join live and are re-watching this, and for those who couldn't, uh, no problem. I'm glad you tuned in on YouTube. So let's talk about the agenda for today. Uh, so some agenda items, we're going to talk about end of year and closing out this school year. I cannot wait to close out this school year. Uh, we'll discuss uh, exams, regions, AP exams, CTE certifications. I'm going to talk a little bit about the CDC updated guidelines um, and, and the guidance that they've changed, as well as vaccinations. And then we'll talk a little bit about summer school and what is in store for next year. And we'll end with Q&A. Uh, but of course, uh, you can't really ask questions while watching the video, you, but you can email them. So we'll start with end of the year. The last day of academic classes is going to be June 11th. The last day of school officially is June 25th. And so what does that mean? That means that we have 16 days left of classes. So that's four grade-wide classes left and six classes of A, B, C, D, E, F periods. Um, and so what that means is there's no time left. Uh, I know a lot of kids are saying like, I'll get my grades up at the end. This is the end. <laughs> we are at the end. There is no end to wait for. We are here. Uh, and so now is the time to get those grades up. Now is the time to make up whatever work you have not done. There's, there's no more time. It is now. Um, a couple of uh, folks were asking, um, you know, when they saw the calendar, like what's going to be happening between uh, June 14th and June 25th, right? And that's what you're probably wondering. If the last day of academic class is the 11th, what's going to happen in the two weeks between that? So one is a lot of exams. So our Regents and CD CTE certification exams are going to have um, happen during those weeks. Also, we're going to have some summer school prevention boot camps. Uh, one of the things that we'll discuss today is summer school, and I don't think anyone wants to go to summer school. And so we'll be having some targeted um, boot camps, invite only, um, during those two weeks for students that are right on the cusp of possibly needing to go to summer school. And so hopefully we can prevent that. We're going to be doing some cell activities because attendance will still be required. Like we still have to take attendance all those days. And so we'll be taking attendance through cell. And then we're going to have some fun events. We are going to have an in-person amazing race. We're still doing it, bringing it back. Uh, we're going to have an in-person basketball tournament. So those are things that are still going to happen. Um, and so we'll have some, some fun as well. It's work hard, play hard. So uh, it's about time we, we did some play hard. Uh, this is what the schedule looks like on a calendar. So you guys can see uh, what are the red days that are left? What are the gray days? June 7th is when we start 11th hour week. And so during that 11th hour week, there's actually gonna be no cell and no gym. So it is strictly focusing on 11th hour making up work. Um, now there's two days on there that I wanna point out to you. Uh, one is May 31st, which is Monday. That is Memorial Day, there's no school. And then June 3rd, it is Chancellor's Day, there is no school. So that week, um, there will only be three days of classes. Some other key dates to keep in mind, um, our grade value ceremony, the last one of the year is gonna be um, online on June 16th. And then the Regents date for um, ELA, Living Environment, Algebra, and Earth Science. AP exams will also be taking place uh, during this time. Um, you'll see the dates and times of the AP exams. Um, you know, some of the exams are as late as four o'clock and some of them are as early as 12. Uh, we don't have dates for CTE exams yet, but um, we will be sharing those uh, shortly. And just something to keep in mind, every single exam is in person. So these are not exams that you can take online at home. So in terms of uh, the region schedule, again, you cannot take these on your own time. You can't switch when you take them. These are statewide exams. So everywhere they're administered always at the same time. 
um, on the same day. And so um, this is the state schedule so you can see it. So now let's talk about the Regents exam. So who takes the Regents exams? So this year, usually it's everyone takes the Regents exam, ninth graders, 10th graders, 12th graders, 11th graders. Um, this year, it's mainly gonna be ninth and 10th graders. And the reason is every Regents was canceled except for English, algebra, earth science, and living environment. And so anyone that is uh, in English 10, which is 10th grade English, algebra one, earth science, or living environment will be taking the regions. Your regions are not canceled. Um, and so the question that I've been getting a lot from parents since I've sent out that uh, message was, do you still need regions to graduate? Yes, yes, regions are still a graduation requirement. There's a little bit of a misconception where people think that the regents requirements have been waived. They have not. Regents are still a requirement for graduation. Um, so there's not been any waivers for having to pass a regents for graduation. So is the regents only in person? Yes, there's no remote regents. There's no online version of it. You can only take it in person. And so that leads us to the next question that parents are asking, well, if my kid is coming into the building, take the regents, how can you be so sure it's gonna be safe? Well, this is why we're asking parents to sign up for the regents. We wanna know exactly how many kids will be showing up. Um, so that way we can plan ahead. We can make sure that everyone is six feet apart. We can make sure that um, we have all the safety precautions in place. Um, we can make sure that we have hand sanitizer, that everyone is spread far enough apart, um, that we're the flow of kids in and out of the building is socially distanced. And so that's why we're asking you uh, to let us know if your child is coming in to take the exam. So the last question is, why should I come in to take the exam, right? And so what is happening where like folks are asking, do I need the regents to graduate? You do. Uh, what the state has put in place is a waiver. And that doesn't mean that you're waived from needing the exam to graduate. What it means is under certain circumstances, you will get an automatic pass on this exam. However, not every student is gonna be eligible for the waiver. It depends on what classes you're in, depends on how you do in the course by the end of the year. And so that is why for us, it's really important that everyone should take the exam because you might not actually know if you're eligible for the waiver until after the exam has been administered. And so, um, for example, like the English Regents is on the 17th. We won't know if kids are eligible for the waiver yet. Um, the other reason that we're suggesting and strongly recommending students take the Regents is you will eventually have to take one, right? So the seniors who are here, they've taken many regents before. They'll tell you exactly what it's like. Ninth graders have never taken a regents before. Um, most of the 10th graders have never taken a regents before. And one of the things that data says is that just from taking the regents multiple times, just from being able to sit for an exam for three hours, you become a better test taker. And so this will benefit you not just on the regents, it'll benefit you on the SATs, on the AP exam, on any standardized test that you take. And so if you're ever gonna take a test for um, the benefit of taking the test and for practice, this is the time. Why? Because it can't hurt you, right? So if you fail the regions and you get the waiver, the waiver is gonna replace the grade. So whatever grade you get will be replaced with an automatic pass if you're granted the waiver. So there's no disadvantage to taking it. And the last reason that we're encouraging students to take it is data, right? Many parents are asking us, how far behind is my child? Like, what really are they missing from the curriculum? I know they didn't learn as much in remote learning as they would have in person. Um, I want to know where are the learning gaps? This is a standardized test. Um, it'll be proctored. It is a test that the entire state is taken is taking. So it is going to give us concrete information on what your child knows and does not know. And that's especially important for our ninth and 10th graders because they're really taking those pivotal exams of English um, and algebra. And so that's gonna set them up for success for the next two or three years at Gateway. 
So next up, AP exams. Who takes AP exams? Well, mainly it's gonna be 11th and 12th graders that are in AP classes. We do have a few select 9th and 10th graders who are in AP classes, so they'll be taking it as well. Um, if you don't know what AP exams are for, um, no problem, I will share. So AP exams are advanced placement exams, and they are basically the exams that you take at the end of an AP class. And so if you score high enough on an AP exam, you automatically get credit for college courses because it's considered a college course. Sometimes some colleges will actually accept that score and waive a required course in college. So for example, I took the AP exam in statistics when I was in high school. I got a three, they're scored out of five. I got a three and it didn't get me out of taking statistics in, in college, but it just gave me three math credits for college. And that was pretty cool. Uh, now I took microeconomics and on the microeconomics AP exam, I got a four. So that score actually got me waived from economics in college. And so it depends on what you score, it depends on your college, um, but it, it is a huge benefit and it looks really great for college applications. AP exams are really expensive. Um, in many schools, students spend hundreds of dollars on AP exams, we pay for them. Um, so again, it cannot hurt you. So is it only in person? Yes, we are administering the exam at UAG only during those designated times. Um, again, that question of how are you gonna ensure it's safe? Um, we have all the protocols in place. We've done it already with the SAT uh, and we know that we can administer it safely, socially distance everyone um, and make sure that you know, no one's at risk. The question I've been getting a lot from kids is, I thought the exams are digital, so why are we coming to take them in person if they're actually on the computer? Well, this is a little frustrating. Um, the AP exams do not work on any Chromebook. So if you have a Chromebook at home, it won't work. Um, if you got a computer from the school, if you came to the school and we lent you a computer, it does not work on any of the school issued laptops. Uh, the AP exams do not work on iPads, they don't work on cell phones, they don't work on tablets, um, they don't work on iPhones, like there's almost no computers that these exams work on. Um, and so the benefit of coming to school to take these exams is our computer labs are set up to have the AP exams work. Um, there's certain software that needs to be installed on the computers. Um, all the Chromebook school issued laptops, iPads, cell phones, tablets, all of that do not accept the installation of that software. And so if you're going to, if you think that you'll be able to log on at home and take the exam, you won't. And then you'll be super upset. And because they're only given during that time, it's not like you'll only find out the day of the exam that you can't take it because it doesn't work on your device and it'll be too late because you won't be able to get to the school in time. Um, the other reason that we're doing it in school, even though it's on, it's actually a digital exam, is if the Wi-Fi cuts out, you're pretty much screwed. So if you're at home and your Wi-Fi lags or something happens, you get shut out of the exam and there's no one there to help you, right? Um, here we have strong Wi-Fi, we have backup Wi-Fi, um, and we also have somebody to help you. So someone will be here to provide you tech support. There's no distractions. Last year when kids had no choice but to take the AP exam at home, um, some of the things that they told us, and many of you last year actually took the AP exams at home. You were telling us like, my mom would interrupt me. My sister would interrupt me. They would think I'm like doing homework, but I'm not doing homework, I'm taking a test. And so I didn't really get to focus. If you do it at school, there's no distractions, there's no interruptions. Um, there's no issues if you have tech support, if you have tech issues, you know, you, you don't have to frantically text Miss Hunter or, or call Ms. D trying to figure out what to do. Someone will be right there to help you. And of course, it's, it's nice to take it with other people and we'll get you guys snacks and food and um, it'll be like a fun little AP party. And the last exam that we're gonna talk about is um, the CTE exams. So CTE certifications. So who takes CT exams? Um, mainly it's 10th, 11th, and 12th graders at UAG. So depending on what pathway you're in, what tech pathway, um, that will indicate when you take the exams. 
So for example, like if you're in DDA, usually you take the exams in 10th and 11th grade. If you're in IT, you usually take it in 10th, 11th and 12th. If you're in software, you usually take it 11th and 12th. So it really depends. This year, the reality is we won't be able to have everyone take these exams. Um, it's just not possible. And so we are gonna prioritize the seniors first. Um, and why? So CTE exams, they are actual certification exams. Um, they're a big reason why you came to UAG. So you came to UAG because you wanted to get certified in the tech field. These certifications are industry specific and industry level exams. So there's actually adults who are 20, 30, 40, 50 years old that are spending hundreds of dollars to take these exams. Uh, hundreds. I mean, some of these exams cost $500 to take. Uh, and the reason that they're taking these exams is many uh, tech jobs, uh, whether entry level or competitive tech jobs are requiring these exams. So they'll say you must be certified in AWS, A+, Net+, you must be certified in Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. So depending on the jobs that you're looking for, they will require certification. We offer them at UAG, we've always offered them and we offer them for free. I mean, they're not free, somebody has to pay for them, but we pay for them. And so it's really important that you take advantage of this opportunity. It will make you a better candidate for any jobs that you choose to pursue after high school or college. It makes you a great candidate for internships, um, but it's also a really great thing to put on your resume, no matter how old you are. And they are a requirement for CTE diploma. So if you want to graduate UAG with a CTE diploma, you need to have passed your, C your CTE certification. Now, why are we prioritizing seniors? As I mentioned, there, it's going to be impossible to have, because last year we didn't administer any uh, of the CTE certifications. We couldn't. And so it's going to be impossible for us to test everybody. And so we're giving a priority to the seniors because that's why they came to UAG, they're graduating. We wanna make sure that they graduate with their CTE certification. So we'll prioritize seniors and then we'll move on to juniors and then sophomores. Because the idea is if the juniors and the sophomores don't get an opportunity to take it this year, they can always take it next year. Is it only in person? So this actually depends. Some of the exams are only in person and some are not. So all the digital design exams are only in person. Some of the IT exams are in person. Software engineering exams are actually remote. So they are digital exams and that's something important to note, um, but they have always been digital exams. So before COVID, these exams were digital. Um, like the AP exams have always been on paper. And because of COVID, they started going digital, but CT certifications have always been digital. But even though they've always been digital, they have been in person. So some of the exams have required you to go to an actual site to take them because of the software and the proctoring requirements. Um, and these are, again, these are industry level exams. So these are um, for adults to take. And so usually you would go to a outside location you would bring your ID, you would register for the exam, they would set you up on a computer and you would take it. Uh, we are a testing site for some of these exams, so we are allowed to administer them. In terms of when are we gonna administer them, we're gonna work out a schedule and based on which students still need to pass the exam, um, you will receive the date that you're scheduled to take it. All right, so next up, updated CDC guidelines and guidance. So we've all heard it. Uh, I got a lot of messages from parents like, oh my God, vaccinated individuals don't have to wear masks. What does this mean for schools? So very important, this does not apply to schools. It might in the future, but as of now, high schools are still required uh, to do exactly what they've been doing. We still have to maintain the same safety measures, six feet distance, mask at all times. I know I'm in the school right now without a mask, a mask, but that's because no one else is here. I'm literally the only one in the building. Um, we're still doing COVID testing every week. So none of that is changing. Um, it does not apply to staff. It does not apply to students. It does not apply to visitors. So as far as the governor and the mayor are concerned, schools are still following the same guidelines as before. Some have asked, are vaccinations required for students and staff? 
So as of right now, no, they are not, but they may be required next year. Um, so far, all signs for me are pointing to yes, but I could be wrong um, in terms of will they be required next year. Um, a couple of you have asked, like, how is that COVID testing been going? So we have tested about 30 students or staff members each week, a combination. Um, we've not had one positive detected uh, since we reopened on March 22nd, which is great. Hopefully it didn't just jinx us. Um, and we're going to keep testing. And so this testing is actually going to continue through June 25th and into the summer as well. So for those that are doing summer school, um, we do know that they're going to continue doing COVID testing. In terms of vaccinations, so several uh, individuals are still nervous about vaccinations. And um, of course, it's a personal choice at the moment. And parents have said, like, I want to learn a little bit more about the vaccine. And so uh, there's more info to come. You'll see an invite via Jupiter. But we are hosting a campus event here um, with doctors and healthcare workers for uh, families of the campus um, for you to learn a little bit more about the vaccine and get some of your questions answered. Another question that I'm getting a lot of is, can the DOE actually require students to get the COVID vaccine? Uh, they can. Uh, for example, they actually already have required vaccines. So right now, like as of now, as of a month ago, as of two years ago, um, students are required to have several other vaccinations to be enrolled in public school. So literally, if you don't have some vaccines, you cannot attend a New York City public school. And they give you no exemptions. Like they don't even give you a religious exemption. Um, so that's for other vaccines. That has not yet applied to the COVID vaccine, but it could. And so there is a chance that next year they say like, yeah, you wanna come to a public school, you need to have the COVID vaccine. Um, especially for, for students who are ages 12 and up because they're eligible. Obviously they can't require the vaccine for uh, students who are ineligible to take the vaccine, but this is a strong, strong possibility for next year. Um, again, I don't think it'll happen this year, but just based on other vaccinations that have been required, it is likely and um, we'll just have to wait and see what they say. A couple of folks have asked uh, where they could sign up for the vaccine. So there's lots of vaccination sites. I personally got vaccinated at City Field. That's just the only place I was able to get an appointment at the time. Uh, but there are so many more places to be able to get vaccinated. I had to wait months to get an appointment. My first few appointments kept getting canceled because I made like an appointment right away in uh, December, January, around then when we became eligible as educators. And they kept getting canceled because there was a shortage of vaccines. Um, fortunately, it's a lot easier to get a vaccine now. Um, but in case you still haven't been able to find a, a location for a vaccination, there is an urgent care clinic right next to the school on 49th and 9th. It's like literally right next to Viv, which is next to Seven Brothers. Uh, it's called, I don't know if it's me doctor or my doctor, but um, we partnered with them and they said that they would hold appointments only for UAG family students and, and staff. So um, I'm gonna send this out via Jupiter, but if you log on to this link, you can get a vaccine appointment, no problem. They have a certain number of weeks blocked off just for UAG. Um, and it's again, for your family as well as students. And you would have to go there and, and do the vaccine if you want to. Uh, quick plug for the New York City School Survey. So you might have heard about this. Uh, you might have seen it on Twitter or received an email. So the New York City Department of Education is currently administering the school survey. They do it every year. It's how we get feedback on how we're doing as a school, but it's also a way for you to share with the Department of Education how you think we are doing as a school or how we did during this pandemic during this time. And they administer this survey every year. Um, and so we're asking you to please complete the survey. So many parents have reached out and said like, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for all the hard work that you've done during this time. Uh, this is your opportunity to praise us. Um, and so it's both for students and parents. Students are gonna complete it in Thursday, on Thursday uh, in class and parents are gonna receive a link via Jupiter to complete it. Um, please, please, please 
do complete it, take some time. It doesn't take long, probably about 15 minutes. Um, and we are gonna enter you in a raffle if you complete the survey. Uh, and so we're raffling off iPads, AirPods, some gift baskets. Uh, the raffle is for parents. Um, but of course, if your parent wants to give you the iPad, they could. Um, but please complete the survey. And once you complete it, email Ms. Diaz to let her know that you did it. All right, so this is what everybody kind of wants to know about summer school and next year. So yes, we are running summer school. Um, anyone, and this means anyone, so anyone this year who does not earn credit for the year, whether it be in earth science and algebra and English and chemistry, in tech, so anyone who fails a course this year will be mandated, and that means required to attend summer school. Now, some classes are online and some are in person. Unfortunately, you do not get to choose if you do it online or in person. Uh, it is based on what is available for the course. We are not running summer school, right? UAG does not run summer school. We are guests at another school. Um, we are at Park West. And so we don't get to make these decisions. Uh, some of the classes are the entire summer, like right after 4th of July through the end of August. And some of the classes are two weeks long. Some of the classes are two days long. And again, you don't get to choose which class you're in. You can't say like, oh, I want to take the two day class. What class you're registered for is based on how much work you need to complete. Um, or if you need to retake the whole course. So if you've been MIA all year and you need to retake a, the entire class, then yes, your summer school class will be the entire summer. Um, if you did really well for the first semester and then struggled second semester and failed the course, um, then maybe the class that you're taking is two weeks long. Again, as a reminder, these teachers are not from UAG. They're central teachers from all over. Some of them are from Park West. Some of them are from schools in Brooklyn. Um, and so summer school is not fun. It is not a good time. Um, kids usually hate summer school. And this is why we're running those like summer school prevention boot camps, especially for the kids who are on the cusp. And so if you're one of the students who's like almost there and passing, um, take advantage of that summer school prevention boot camp so you don't have to be in this situation where you're required to attend this school you've never been at with teachers you don't know. Take the time now, get your work in now, take advantage of 11th hour, um, take advantage of every opportunity for gold that UAG teachers are providing so you can take care of it now and start next school year fresh. Speaking of next school year, what is happening? So I know this is probably why you came uh, to find out what's happening. And in simplest terms, we have no idea. The DOE has not told us anything. We know what you know, which is nothing. They have not communicated anything to principals or to schools about the details for next year. The only thing I've heard is rumors. Uh, and these rumors have come from parents. These rumors have come from teachers. These rumors have come from Twitter. So the three big rumors that I've heard, and I'll talk about those, um, but again, they're not, they're not facts, they're just rumors. So one rumor is that next year is gonna be regular times like pre-COVID. All school is in person, all teachers are in person, regular schedule. Um, Where's this rumor coming from? This rumor is coming from some of the, like based on some of the information, like they're saying teacher accommodations will end June 30th. There will be no more work from home accommodations. It's based on the fact that several other school districts have already announced this. And it's based on the fact that they're already saying vaccinated individuals um, can, can opt to not wear a mask. And so um, one of the rumors that we're hearing a lot about is all signs point to normal. Even in what they're asking principals to do and to submit, um, it almost indicates like next year will be completely regular times. The second rumor that we've heard is that students will have to select remote or in person, and they're not going to be able to switch. If students select remote, they're going to be assigned to a central DOE remote location that provides instruction, so not UAG. So basically UAG would just serve the in-person students and all the remote students who want to do remote would be clumped together in one remote school somewhere. 
Um, this rumor has come from the fact that uh, the mayor has said and hinted at like, you know, parents will have to choose and stick with their choice. Uh, we're really listening to what parents want. Um, and that part about the central DOE remote location has come from the UFT. Um, they've indicated a little bit that uh, teachers at schools will not be required to do both, to do remote and in-person. And so there'll be a separate remote location. And the third rumor that we've heard, which I've already shared a little bit, is that they're saying only vaccinated students will be allowed to come to school in person um, and that all other students will have to do remote learning. And again, it's a combination of sort of what's in the news, what people are talking about, um, the messaging that's going around from the CDC um, and from the state. So again, these are just rumors. Uh, we don't know necessarily if any of these are gonna end up being facts. Uh, all I hope is that they tell us sometime soon because I would love to get you guys some information and start planning for next year. Uh, the gateway magic doesn't just happen. It takes uh, days and weeks of hard work. And so we want to plan as much in advance as possible. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you have any questions, uh, that didn't get answered here, please do not hesitate to email. You can email me, d at uagateway.org, or email Ms. Diaz, vdiaz at uagateway.org. Thanks so much. Bye, all.